Hey, welcome to Backwoods Clock Repair Part 2. A little more advanced than the last one. The last cookie you heard was the one that I fixed in the first video. Then we have this one here. And this is a pretty special clock. It's got the music on it. and You know, a lot of times with these musical ones, it takes the three weights and you have to have everything balanced out just right. And if you look at this clock really close, you'll notice that I have it tilted just a little bit. That's because when I got it, it wasn't running when I had it totally level. So I pulled the back off and I looked inside and I saw that the movement itself had been mounted just a little bit off. So that's all I had to do was just tilt this just a touch to flatten out the movement and make sure it was level from front to back to where it would start working. But that's not today's problem. What have we got going on today? Is this one up here and this clock I picked up just for fun and take a look and let's see what happens. Oh. Ooh, do you see that? It just stopped all of a sudden, just like that. It was running fine, okay? It was running fine. And then all of a sudden, boom, it stopped. Well, what's that going to tell me? Well, there's obviously hair or something back there in the mechanism. So when the gears are coming around, it's hitting on the hair, probably a hair ball or something, and stopping it from working. So we're going to have to really do some serious cleaning on this one and uh, to get it fixed. And let's see what we can get out of it as far as making it chime. Now, no, I'm going to grab a hold of the front of this and not use the hands because I don't really know what's going on with the hands yet. I'm going to pull down a little bit on this to see if I can get to go over the hump. Didn't go on the half. Wow, see I gotta hold this down in order to even make it move. This is so dirty. Another thing I noticed on this is it looks okay from the back. It's got the pin clips that just go over the roof. But when you see it up here on the front, it's got this crack up here. So we're gonna have to fix that too. Okay, well I just set it down here on the table again. I'm not going to clean the outside. The outside looks fine for right now. We want to see what's going on so we can get it work on the inside. And I'm looking at these hands right here and they're kind of moving around a little bit so you know I'm going to try and take them off. You know, Let's see if we can get them off in one piece. That I'm looking at that hour hand and it looks like it's cracked really bad. We'll see if the minute hand will come off. Once again, you're using your, as many fingers as you can get on there at the same time to pull everything up evenly at the same time. You want to use your, your thumbs and your fingers exactly as, as a fulcrum and pull up evenly so you don't break anything on here. So if you look at this old hand, I don't know if this is what it's made out of, but it's uh, definitely seen some better days. You can see the crack right here at the very base and it goes all the way across so more than likely this hand is going to just fall apart you know we may be able to get that fixed we may be able to put a little piece on there and save that hand as long as we're really careful pulling it off so I want to keep my my fingers away from that that part of the hand and pull up well, this one came off easily so that's that's what's that's what's nice about these because this was this is all you have to do to make them set right just put it in there then we'll set it down on there when we get done that'll be set in perfectly. Um, also looking at this right off the bat um, first thing I see is that this is mounted crooked and you can see up here where the roof is it's just not mounted properly so you know it's just held on by a couple nails we can pull that off and straighten it out and get it right also to where it's supposed to be where it's not showing the side trim here which is what we're looking for 
Uh, another thing that I, I did when I just took it down, I went ahead and I put this little um, bag tie through the chain so they're not going to slide up inside there and come off. If they do, it's no big deal. Rethread them is just like threading a needle. It's, it's not very hard. You just you start them in there around the gears and you turn the gear and it'll come right back out. Make sure it falls through the hole. And pretty simple when the gears turn. Like this one here does not turn, unfortunately. But we're going to fix that. Alrighty. Okay. I'm going to put this little piece up here just because you don't really need anything up here in the front because the birds connect on the front so you can't see it anyway but I'm just going to do it just because Ooh, remember what I said about don't stick your hand in there until you look and see what's in there let me get a screwdriver here it's going to be a little more difficult anyway so I just happen to have this little screwdriver here and let's just see what we got going on holy shit oh there you are <laughs> Get out of there. You know you don't belong in there. My little buddy here. Just to give you an idea. Uh, it's got the gong, so that's good. That's a good sign. Yeah. Pretty cool, huh? Did it make you jump? It was supposed to. <laughs> Because it's almost Halloween, and I just had to throw that in for fun. This is uh, the 25th of October, 2011, I do believe. Well, that's just how easy the front comes off. And because it was mounted wrong, we're going to be using the same nail holes on the outside, but not the same ones on the inside. So I'm just going to go ahead and knock these back out through. See, so all I'm doing is just knocking the nails out through. And when we put them back in, we'll put them back in, we'll put it in straight. No. Well, we're going to have to dismantle this clock completely. Um, basically, the one reason we got to dismantle this clock is because everything's in the way. You can't get to it. It's not working. Um, when I shine a really good light into here, inside, you can see the stuff on the gears, and it's actually got rust on it. It's so old. Open her up. Doesn't have to be too far, just enough to get it off of there. Pull your master link back off. Oh. Listen to that, isn't that nice? It is so nice having a good working cuckoo clock. And these here are going to be Christmas presents if we get them running. This is the whole idea. Okay, so that's set back in place. That's out of the way. Now all we got to do is very simply just pull these on through until they come out. And this one here did not pull. That's right, huh? Okay, this one's not going to pull. So what we're going to do is we're just going to feed it out of there. And basically what that entails is just you feed it through to where it's loose and just let it come out on its own. it's still working but you can see the crack I mean it is totally obvious right here so the bellows is blown out we're gonna have to put new bellows in or at least try and repair these um. We already pulled the screw out of here, so what we want to do is get these bellows out. And it, like everything else in this thing, it's they're glued in, so more than likely. 
There it came. It came right off. See, we got the glue off of there now. We can be proud of our work. Okay, so here you have one set of bellows. This is all there is to it. This is it. This is all it is. All this is is a little bag, and the bag is pushing air through the whistle. Okay, so when we get this fixed up to where it's holding air, that'll work fine again because it only torn at one spot. The whole bellows is not totally wasted. And this is here is what makes your bird go up and down. This little piece of wire right here. <laughs> so obviously I'm not the, uh, I mean I'm, this is the first time I'm pulling this a clock apart because the glue was already there. And we had to break through the glue in order to take it apart. See, it's actually running in my hand because I'm putting pressure on this gear to equalize the weight to make it turn on its own. Just to show you what's going on. So all I had to do, I don't got to put weights back on it. There's this gear right here. This is the gear that is the actual mechanism. Um, for the clock itself, the actual timing mechanism. So just put my thumb on this gear, um, that's going to turn counterclockwise. So I'm just going to give this, make sure you got it holding it level. Then just put a little bit of pressure on there. And see, it turns on its own just fine. Um, like I said, there's a hair, there's probably a hairball up in here. Well, there's a hairball right there. Okay. Let's get that one out of there. Okay. Oh, this thing is just so disgusting. Another hairball. The gears actually look fine. But, like I was saying, look at all that rust right there. Is that just incredible or what? The whole thing is rusty. And the thing is, what that's going to do is it's going to throw the weight off because you have to have everything balanced perfectly and everything clean, so we're going to have to remove that rust. Oh, look at that. It'll come off with my hand. Okay, let's try it now. Yeah, see now as long as it's in the right position, it's going to count how, how many number of cuckoos it's going to do right there. And when it gets up here to the last tooth, three, two, one, now it drops back down and it locks into place. And that's the end of that cycle. We can do that again. Let's count and see where we're at. Because, like I said, this here actually tells you how many cuckoos it is. Okay, what time it is. It tells the clock how many cuckoos to make. This here is what's actually making the cuckoos. So these two are in, in time. There's 12 little spots here, 12 different levels. And so we're going to try that one more time. You know what, let's do this. One more time here. So it drops down to the bottom. And we're going to count these right now. So you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So it's going to be um, raising it and lowering it ten times. One, two, three, 
four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and now the last one. Okay, eleven. At the same time, it's making the cuckoo come out, which is right here. This little arm here. This makes the cuckoo come out. And so when this gets done, this is also going to drop back. Okay, see, so there your cuckoo's going in. Right, it's actually going up and down, making the cuckoo, and that's it. Now it's back in, the door's closed. Okay, so we'll do that one more time again. The door is going to open with this, the gong is going to go off with that, the bird's going to cuckoo with the other side that I just showed you. So the door is open and the bird's out now. And these are your bellows attachments down here. These little wires that are going up and down, so you got your coo coo, coo coo, okay. Um, I hope that helps you guys out. That's pretty much self-explanatory on that, the rest of it. Now I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Okay, let's take a look. You can see all the dust on here. Okay, I mean if I just take my finger, it's just not even enough to get it off there. So we're going to have to get a toothbrush and clean all this stuff up with a toothbrush. See? I mean, just pull that stuff right out of there. I mean, the toothpick you just can't beat. And of course, a Kleenex. You know, so each one of these little gears, we're going to go ahead and clean out the inside of each one of them with the toothpick. Because I am so sure that it was that little piece that we just saw come out of there that was stopping everything. That's all it takes. When I'm saying a, a dust ball, I'm saying something you know that Horton the Who would think is is large. It's actually a very, very small piece. That's all it takes to stop a clock. Also, when you're looking at these gears, you want to make sure that there's nothing in here you know as far as maybe a uh, misalignment or maybe a gear has a little bit of the brass missing all I'm doing is just cleaning it out with this little piece here each individual one because I think this is the gear that was causing us the problems I just put my finger back on it and get it again. I mean, am I knowing exactly where my finger's at or which one I'm hitting at the same time now? Nah, but we're gonna we'll go over them a number of times and make sure we got it right. Basically, you know, you want to keep your hands not hard. You don't want to push hard on these clocks because it's really, really important that they're allowed to move and do what they need to do without you having to worry about what's going on underneath them. I think I'm going to put this little piece of rubber down here underneath that just for a little bit more of a brace. Everywhere that a gear touches a different gear, like this one here touches this one, every single place where the gear is touching is where you want to look for the wear and where you want to look for a little piece of anything. And you can see I've gotten a whole bunch of little tiny pieces of black, just gunk, real hard pieces of just, you know, dried pieces of lint and dirt and who knows what all have come out of here. And when we get done, this is going to be a good working clock again.
but cleaning is kind of extreme sometimes it seems because there's just so the parts are so tiny you have to have you know almost just microscopic vision or like in my case I've got um, a great big pair of glasses on. I'm using actually two pairs, a pair of 250s and a pair of 125s. So I've got everything magnified, uh, was that three and a quarter times. So I can see every little gear is just totally clearly and plain. You know, maybe if I was in my 30s or 40s again, this would be okay and I wouldn't have to use glasses. But, you know, magnification glasses for, you know, cleaning stuff like this is just just something you want to do you know it works really good you can see things that much better and you know even for you kids out there that are watching this get yourself a pair of reading glasses if you're going to be cleaning clocks you want to have at least a you know go down and have your parents take you to the store and see what will actually work because when you're cleaning these little tiny gears it's just the smallest little piece in here that you miss is what's going to stop it from working because that's all I'm looking for is I'm checking each little tooth on each little gear to make sure that there's nothing in here. Or to make, there's, make sure there's no gears broken. You know, I've been working on things like this all my life. Even since when I was, you know, like eight or nine years old. A friend of my father's gave me a old erector set from the 1930s that he had had when he was a kid and you know back then you're using all these same type of gears and uh, you know you, you learn about this stuff by having your kids take care of this stuff you know when they're children and they learn how to clean it then this is basically the same thing I used to do with the erector set I used to build little trucks that worked with motors and everything and I had electric motors you had to put new bushings into and stuff like that. You see all this rust in here you know this just has to come out. If this won't come out of here that's this gonna just keep the weight off and it's not gonna come off with anything except for you know really heavy duty brushing. Just wasn't being taken care of. And this is what I like doing. If I see a clock out and around sitting in somebody's barn or something that's just sitting there and all dusty and full of spiders or whatever. You know, I like clocks, so I'll go out and get it and bring it back home and clean it up. And now i got a video camera. I can make videos here for all my buddies here on YouTube, you guys. You know, and thanks for watching this. And you know, with all my videos, when you watch them, if you want other people to see them, you just got to click that thumbs up. I mean, yeah, here it is, the middle of this video, and I'm putting it in here. I don't put this in every video. I just say it every now and again because a lot of people don't realize that if they don't click the thumbs up on it and they don't respond to it, um, the videos don't get seen, they don't get known. So a lot of good videos that are on here, they don't have that many hits because people don't know who they are. That's kind of like with me, but I just kind of figure whoever's going to see them is going to see them, and that's okay. This is the same way we use to gather gold dust. So this is what we were getting out of there. All this little stuff. There's a couple little brass shavings and stuff in here. Here's a little piece of one of the gears. Um, there's a whole all this little dirt. I mean, there's a whole bunch more on this napkin, but this is what fell into place. Now it's airtime. So I wanted all this stuff out of here. All the tools out of here. So when I blow it out, I'll be clean.
Okay, now what we got is the same thing we had on the other one as far as oiling goes. We've got all these little oil baths right here. Every one of these little pieces has to be oiled. And so we're going to do the same thing that we did with the other one. I'm going to use a toothpick and I'm just going to break the tip off to apply the oil again. What I want is just a little bit of a dam because the oil is going to go right on here. And you just don't want too much. So. Touch it to the spot, and there goes the oil. Don't need a whole lot. Okay. The ones that can take a little more, I'll put a little more on there. Don't want to have too much, like I was saying before, because what it does is it just collects dust. So a couple of these have got too much oil. We're going to take the, you know, the little bit extra off. But this is really, as far as I'm concerned, the way I've always done it, and it just has always worked the best for me. So go ahead and just use a toothpick. I mean, you can get all these high-priced little gadgets that people want to use to put oil on and stuff, or whatever they want to sell you these days. The, the greatest invention that was ever, you know, come up with or whatever. But when it comes right down to it, a little piece of wood is all you need. You can go out there and cut it off any tree yourself. It doesn't cost you a dime. Or like this toothpick. Well, I don't know. I've, these are toothpicks my mom had, and she's been gone a long time, so it shows how often I use these toothpicks, not very often. I just want to make a little brush. That's all I'm going to do, just a little bit of brush, take the extra oil off. See, it's just going to suck that little bit of extra oil back off of there, all right on its own. Works really good, because I just want the dam full. I don't want anything else on there. And it just sucks the oil right back off. Leave me with the, leave me with the perfect amount that you need. Because all you're looking for is to fill up each one of these little reservoirs. And you look down the inside, and you can see we got oil in here now. A little too much on that one. That's okay. You know, why do I do this myself? You know, why don't I just take it in and pay someone? Well, because I have a lot of fun doing this. And this is just one of those things that I enjoy doing. So that's why I'm not here doing this right now. I just enjoy making things work. Now it just moves with it, just barely even touching it. Well, wow, that is so much nicer. I'm just barely even touching it, and it's moving perfectly. I just want to double check and make sure I got every one of these little spots because it's so hard to tell sometimes. Well, I think we're 
done here. We got everything oiled. I don't see anything I missed. But I always double check. If there's spots that I see that maybe don't have oil on them, I'll put a little bit of oil on them just to make sure they get some. So I don't want to. If I'm going this far and taking something apart like this, I definitely am not going to take a chance of not oiling every single piece. That one has oil on it. And then, like I said, if you just take your little piece of Kleenex to the side, it sucks the extra oil off of there. And that's all there is to it. So we have one nicely working oil clock now. It's so light that you don't have to tighten it up very much. You just want it snug about to where it was before. You definitely don't want to take a chance on stripping it out. What we want to do with a bird is make sure that he is centered in the hole. Okay. We want him level, so we're just going to test it out, make sure he's okay. Okay, let's check it out. Now, is that good enough? What do you guys think? Does that look pretty centered to you? Looks okay, huh? He's not going up and down yet because we don't have the rest of it in there. But he will, and when he goes down, that's what opens his mouth. That's the piece that hits up back here in the back. So, okay, now with the chain, there's no sense in having either either end put on because you got to have both ends off, either one end to take it off or the other end to put it back on. So what I want to do is just inspect each link, look at each one, make sure they're in good shape. And if I see any of them that are bent, um, I'll go ahead and fix them or take them out, one of the two, depending on how bent they are. Because they have to be able to ride on those gears. Because these are so intricate, everything has to be so clean and so well balanced that if there's just, you know, too many spots of dust on the inside or one chain is just not willing to do what it's supposed to do, that's all it takes just to make it not work. And then the chain looks pretty good. I mean, it's not brass colored anymore, but for the most part, it's okay. Okay, now we're going to hang the chains back up. And when you're pulling them up, you always know that the chains are on the right. So I got one hole here for this one, one hole here for this one. And they got to be fed back in the same way. So if the weights are on here and you pull it up to feed the weights back, you got to put it in through the right hand hole. Or actually, I guess it would be the left hand hole if you're looking at it that way. In order to feed the chains back around the gear. Pretty simple to do. You can see the gear plainly. All you're going to do is get it started on there. Just 
Just gotta make sure it's going the right way. And just spin the gear. fall off. It's got some paint on it and this is a good place where um, it may have been getting a little bit of paint up inside when they painted a wall or whatever it was they painted. They got the paint on the chain and the chain is going to go up into the gearing when they pull it to tighten it up and then of course the paint goes into the gears. This may have been the cause of the problem the whole time was just dropping paint up in there. So you want to be sure and get all that paint off of there. And I'm, you know, I'm holding it kind of tight because I'm cleaning it with my hands at the same time. Is it really doing a great job of cleaning? Well, no, but it's working. Just getting the dust off is all I'm trying to do. So I can always wash my hands. Okay, so we're ready for this one. Just gonna line this part up for the back. And then what we did get is, like I said, I went down to Grandpa's house and we got some more screws. So I got some small screws to put in here instead. And what I want to do is I'm just gonna line it up and use the screwdriver to put these screws in here where the staples were but I'm not going to put them in very tight I just want to have them in just tight enough that we just put these back ones in just enough to, to get it going so I'm probably going to have to pre-drill them the front now. See we've got this opened up to where it's going to move back and forth so you can do what you want with this job because you didn't put in the front end. Because what we want is to have this lined up to where the sides are even and it doesn't show and then we can push it up just a little bit there that's pretty good really right there. Okay, so 
so the front is on there good and then this when we screw it down because these are already in place this is just going to pull right down onto here and it's going to form a good enough seal doesn't have to be a perfect seal because they're not airtight um, let's check our place for our front end here though make sure it's going to fit on still That's better. So I just don't want any pressure on the middle part. So, so that's good. I'm going to lift it up. I'm going to set it in there. And for right now, we're going to call that good. Because I don't want to go too heavy on this. Okay, we're ready to mount it back up on the wall, so that's what we're going to do next. Well, there she goes, working just fine. So, let's stop it and figure out where we are on time. Okay, it's at 12 noon, straight up and down. Now, I've got to get some little tacks to tack the face on. I don't have that yet. But we're just making sure it's going to run. So, we're right at noon. We're going to put this hand straight up, both thumbs on there, and push. Nice and even. Well, not bad. It's keeping time. So is the other ones. They're all a little bit off. A little bit different than the others, just so we can hear them all separate. But they all work. Wow. Fantastic. You all have a good one. Hey, I hope this video helped you out. If you have any questions, um, you can always give me a little holler right here on YouTube. Thanks a lot.